Speed ramps are a great way to add excitement to a shot and can even be used as a way to transition from one clip to another, but there are a lot of small tweaks you can make when applying speed ramps that stop them from looking amateurish and jerky and make them look a lot more professional and a lot smoother. Hi guys and welcome back to Editor's Life and today we're going to be looking at how to properly speed ramp footage. So the way that people will often speed up or slow down a clip is they'll go to make a selection for the section they want to change the speed on, they'll right click, they'll go to speed and duration and then they'll type in a percentage and then you'll see in the middle it'll speed up for this part and slow down again. But the issue with this is that it's a little bit jerky, you'll see that it goes from being its normal speed to fast to its normal speed again a little bit too quickly. There's no fade between those speeds. When speed ramps are applied the proper way, it makes things a lot smoother and means they can be used for a huge range of shots or edits. So here in the timeline we've got a few examples of different types of shots that are ideal for time remapping. So we've got a drone shot over these buildings, we've got a cloud time lapse which you saw a second ago, and then I spent some of today filming some watches quickly on, uh, on a turntable using a macro lens so we can look at how effective time remapping can be as a, a way to transition between multiple different clips. So first up we'll take a look at this drone shot. The first thing you want to do is make your video channel bigger so we can see what we're doing and zoom in a bit. You'll notice in the top left corner there's an effects icon. If you right click on this you want to come down to time remapping and then select speed. So this line down the middle represents 100% speed so that is the clip's natural speed. And say you want the drone shot that's coming towards the building to be faster at the beginning and then slow down as the building comes in. What you want to do is press command or control and click on this percentage bar and then if you drag this up you'll notice that the percentage is increasing and that'll shorten the overall length of the clip. And what this essentially leaves you with is a similar kind of result to when we did the clouds at the beginning. The, the change in speed is too instant, it goes from you know, sped up to whatever percentage you selected to its natural 100% speed instantly with no ramp in between. And the way to improve this effect is if you just zoom in on this marker in the middle and select the left hand side, you can drag to the left and you'll see it's actually creating the speed ramp between the two speeds in the middle. And now you'll notice the gradual decrease in the middle between the two speeds. Now this looks a lot better than before, but we can go one step further and give it a little bit more of a dynamic look. And to do this, what you want to do is, on the markers, you can click on either left or right, you'll notice this toggle pop up in the middle. If you select the top end and pull to the left, you'll notice it's starting to create a bit of an eased S-curve. The difference between doing this and not doing this is, is pretty minimal, to be honest, but it does make things look a little bit more professional. So for the time it takes, you might as well go that extra step. Okay, so for example two, the cloud time lapse. Say you want it to start at normal speed, speed up in the middle and then return to normal speed. It's basically the same process as before but we'll add a second speed ramp to the clip. So again, zoom in on your clip, right click on effects, time remap and speed. And this time what we want to do is create a marker at the beginning, create a marker somewhere near the end and pull up the percentage in the middle. I'm going to go up to about 735%. And for this, you want to, on the left hand side, on your first marker, drag the second point to the right. On the second section, pull the left marker to the left. And we'll do the same step again with the S curve. So clicking on there and drag in. Click on another marker and drag that in. And if we play this through now, you'll see it just adds a nice little dynamic element to a shot that otherwise might have dragged on a little bit too long without it. Finally, I'll just show you the timeline for this quick edit that I filmed earlier on. And you'll see the range of time remapping that's gone on here. What I've done is sped up the end of one shot and then the beginning of the next shot. And this acts as a sort of transition. I have gone a little bit overboard here, but it's just to show you how to implement these techniques into an edit and into a timeline. So for this shot, I've time remapped the middle of the clip, a bit like we did with the clouds earlier on. And then I've sped up again towards the end which was immediately followed by a couple of quick hard cuts. So as you can see, you can still mix in some hard cuts with the time remapped transitions. And it's all just about experimenting and mixing things up and seeing what works well in your edits. Shot seven in the edit that's uh, in a nested clip. This is because that shot was time remapped to speed up the rotation. But if you want to add any additional effects to a time remapped clip, such as the warp stabilizer or zoom effects, 
you need to nest the clip first and then add these on secondary. So you'll see that in the middle, I had just a quick little zoom and rotation effect because I had the resolution of that clip to allow me to punch in. And again, it's all just about experimenting and, uh, and trying different things and seeing what things work for you. So I hope you found this helpful and you can start implementing this into your own work. If you enjoyed the tutorial, dropping a like on the video would be really helpful for me. And for those of you that are subscribed, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.